Hey, DevOps users, I'm going to show you today how you can restrict people from committing code directly into a branch you don't want it in or from merging code into a branch when you would prefer it to be a pull request that needs to be approved first. The screen might be in dark mode or you may only have one project or it might look exactly like what you see on the screen. Either way, we're going to begin by clicking on your projects. Next, we have got to select the repository. You might have multiple repositories in your project. Click on repos, select the project that you want from the drop down at the top. Next, that's this drop down. I don't know if it's showing up for you guys. Only I only have one repository there. Next, click on branches. Now, you may have just a couple, you may have a ton. Either way, as you hover on each one of these rows where there's a branch, you're going to see um, the three dot button show up, a three dot and a star. Choose those three vertical dots, that means more options, and you're going to go down to branch policies. Good job. Now that you're in branch policies, there's a few things that we can do. We can do require a minimum number of reviewers, that's for pull requests. If you select this first button, it's going to show a minimum number of required reviewers is needed in order for a pull request to be approved. So by default, it's two, but you could select one, etc. And as you can see, the options allow requesters to approve their own changes. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. They come in here and they click approve. That means that you're going to require a pull request in order to merge. That was that second scenario. If you don't want them to be able to merge at all until a pull request is approved, that's where this number of reviewers comes in here. Make it greater than one or put it one, but don't check this box. Prohibit the most recent pusher from approving their own changes. Well, this could come into place if you got multiple people pushing code into a branch, but having a single pull request for that. It may not be a very common scenario. Uh, the next box is allow completion, even if some reviewers vote to wait or reject. Uh, this kind of defeats the purpose, in my opinion, unless you've got certain reviewers that don't, that need to approve and others that don't. But in general, it kind of the whole point of having a minimum number of reviewers on a pull request is so that they have to approve it. Just saying, oh, well, you need two people, but I don't really care if they need to approve or not. This checkbox probably doesn't have a lot of um, scenarios. But if you think differently, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. When new changes are pushed, if you check that, then you got a few choices here. The first one is require at least one approval on the last iteration. Um, the next is reset all approval votes. And then lastly, reset all code reviewer votes. I like to use the middle one. I'll explain what this is. <clears throat> so if you've pushed some changes and then either you realize, oh my gosh, I got to fix something or let's say someone rejects your pull request or marks it waiting, then you as the guy that pushed or gal that pushed the code in, you might go in and make a fix. Well, let's say that one of the reviewers approved it and another one rejected it. It's going to reset the one that approved it also, not just the one that rejected it. So now it's back to we need both of those reviewers to go in and approve it again in order for your pull request to be allowed to be merged. Don't forget, you still have to merge your pull request once you've completed, once everybody's approved, somebody still has to merge it. And depending on your team, you may want that to be the person who pushed the code, or it may need to be the person who, the last person that approved the code. Someone has to click that merge button. All right, let's keep going. Um, the next one here, check for linked work items. This is kind of neat. If you're going to use the other features of DevOps, like the project management side of things, then you can create work items and you can link them in Visual Studio. And I'll show you how to do that in another project that I have open here in another tab. So if you're in your project, hover over boards, click on work items, or you can click on sprints or backlogs, depending on where you have it stored, how you want to find it. For me, I'm going to click on backlogs because I haven't created a current sprint for this demo. Um, I've got, you've got a choice here as a task. Could be a bug too. Uh, down here under uh, development, you can click the plus on add link. As you can see, um, the link type you want is going to be branch. From here, 
pick your repository main comment if you want click OK data vids demo task number one look at the very top left small letters it says task seven star hit save and close the star just meant needs to be saved so it's task seven remember that number okay now we're going to come to visual studio let's say i'm in that branch made some changes got a file here ready ready to be pushed out if i hit the pound sign seven you'll see that that automatically populated data of its demo task one. I can click on that and commit that. So what we're saying is that we've got all the work items linked are part of one or more commits or part of the pull request. So if I was to push that and then go do a pull request from the branch I'm in, which is in this case, dev forward slash feature dash ABC, so I could initiate a pull request here, or I could come out to um, DevOps and do it. If you do it from here, it's under Git, Azure DevOps, new pull request. It's going to pop you back out here. I'm going to close this because I'm already logged in in another browser. It's defaulted to, to Edge there, but I use Chrome. So if I was to come back out here, I could do repos, pull requests new pull request and here's the branch i just changed and as you could see i actually did one before i started the video so i'll just remove that so remove the confusion but as you can see here is a work item oops i actually clicked on it took me right into it let me hit back so as you can see right down here in the bottom of the screen i've got a work item that's linked to this pull request. So now coming back to our original screen here, I said check for linked work items. If we turn that on and put required, that means that every work item that is linked to this branch that you committed to is going to be required in order for this pull request to be approved. All right, that's a long story to cover one radio button, but it was an important one if you use work items. If you don't use work items, then, you know, well, maybe you'll use it someday. Next up, check for comment resolution. This is a good one. I think personally all comments should be resolved because comments, when we're doing a pull request, is how we tell the users, hey, this is messed up. You need to fix that. Let me show you what, what I mean by that. See, comments sound simple, but it might not be. My pull request. We're going to finish creating this pull request. Uh, obviously, you'd add a user or two here. Let's hit create. Now let's say I'm a reviewer. I'll be on this screen and I'll, and I'll look at the code. Let's go to files. Careful to hit files here and not files here. It'll take you on the left. If you hit files on the left, it takes you out of the pull request. Now all I did was I added a space to a file. But normally you'd see files here. You can click, just left click and drag and let go and you can create a comment directly on the code that you're trying to change. Let's go to overview. I can add a, add a comment on the whole pull request too. That's something I like to do too, because it shows right at the top, makes it really important. You could say, hey man, um, next, uh, before I approve this, fix the color on the home screen logo. Okay, say something like that, hit comment. Now what we're saying is, is that someone has, the, the person who submitted this pull request has to come in and say, okay, it's fixed and click reply and resolve. If they don't have the resolve button clicked, see how it says reactivate now, it says resolve. If they're not all resolved, then our pull request will not be able to be approved if the check for comment resolution is checked. Next up, we've got limit merge types. Uh, this is a great one. If you're not familiar with merge types, I'll just cover the two important ones real quick. Squash merge and basic merge. Basic merge means every commit that was made before you did the pull request after you checked out the branch will be copied to the new branch. So if I said work in progress one, work in progress two, and then the third one was, hey, everything's done, then it's going to show all three of those commits. If I say squash merge, it allows me to come up with a new commit message and it only shows one commit. It combines all three into one, but it only shows the new commit message that you sent. Build validation. 
and does what it says here. Validate the code by pre-merging and building pull request changes. You hit the drop down. It just says there's no build policies found. In order to do any kind of build validation, you have to have a build policy, which allows you to build. You can build. You can set up a YAML file and, and do a pipeline and have everything build after you commit. And that needs to be, then it would need to actually build as in not have build errors before it accepts the merge, accepts the, I'm sorry, accepts the pull request. <clears throat> That's a really good one. Uh, check status, require other services to post successful status to complete pull requests. This is great if you're linking to some third-party tools. Um, I, ha I haven't had a lot of personal need for this at work, but I could see how it could be very useful. Automatically include reviewers. Yeah, we want to include your reviewers, definitely. All right. That is uh, pull requests. And really, we got upon this by saying, how do we prevent people from checking into or committing code directly into the master branch or the develop branch. And the answer is require a pull request. That's it, guys. Hope it helped you. Thank you. Bye.